when I got my job in animation, I learned how to code, which helped me make animation tools. And then I was like, oh, I can write my own halftone filter and then I can do whatever I want with it. And then that led to discovering like more complex patterns, like playing around with fractals and stuff. And then by doing that in the computer, I was able to try a lot of different ideas really quickly. When I did it by hand again, I had more confidence about what would work. And it has kind of gone back and forth between the computer and doing it by hand. Hello, and welcome back to the Quest for Zest. Clark Underwood here, per usual, and today I'm headed to meet artist Bill Tavis. This is actually one of his murals right here. It was uh, on my way, so I thought I'd stop by and see it. There's actually another one that I'm gonna see just a few blocks down from here. He's working in half tones with like fractal shapes, making all sorts of inspiring work, and I can't wait to meet him and see it, but first, I gotta get there. Bill. Hey. I'm Clark. Clark, nice Great to meet you. I found you. you. You know, the, the paint stains, I think, were, were a really good lead-in. Definitely. <laughs> so excited to see your work. Oh, it's hanging everywhere. How appropriate. Wow. So tell me about this work in process with the half-tone vertical lines. I saw a lot of this when I was looking at your your work online, and it is fascinating. What's a definition of halftone? Because when I hear the word, I think of like newsprint. This is something that feels different, but what's the commonality? It's the same idea though. It's a, it's a repeating pattern that changes in thickness. And it's basically just on or off. Like in the newspaper, it'll just be black dots on the white paper. Depending on the size of the pattern, the illusion when you look at it from far enough away is that you see tones halfway in between. So with my art, I scale it up so that the pattern is obvious and it's kind of this tension in between where you see the pattern and you just kind of barely see the image that the pattern is creating. Because I'm noticing standing this close, the faces disappear a little bit. Yeah. And then I take this many steps back and everybody's looking at me. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's really cool. So I've kind of gotten used to it working up close where I kind of know what's going to work, but I do have to step back every once in a while to check it because I can, yeah, I can't really see it. How did your artwork go towards this like heavy pattern, half tone, fractal kind of motif? Uh, I first discovered it at animation school and um, that was like more of a trade school than an art school. So uh, they told me not to ever do it again. So I had to do it forever, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I, ha I have one of my really early pieces over here if you want to look at it. It's a self-portrait from probably 2005. And I spent like 30, 40 hours or something to do that drawing. And then I, I brought it into school and one of my classmates was like, it looks like you just traced a Photoshop filter. But that, that got me thinking, I was like, what would set this apart from a filter? And then I started playing around with Photoshop filters and seeing what Photoshop could do. And then um, when I got my job in animation, I learned how to code, which helped me make animation tools. And then I was like, oh, I can write my own halftone filter and then I can do whatever I want with it. And then that led to discovering like more complex patterns, like playing around with fractals and stuff. And then by doing that in the computer, I was able to try a lot of different ideas really quickly. When I did it by hand again, I had more confidence about what would work. And it has kind of gone back and forth between the computer and doing it by hand. Really, really cool. Because when I first saw some of your works, I couldn't believe that it was by hand. And there's things about the that I can do in the computer that I can't do by hand. And there's things I can do by hand that I can't do on the computer. And understanding both of those mm -hmm. allows me to, to push it. So when did you discover paint? Because now you're, you're working a lot of fine art and the murals. When did you yeah. come out of the computer? Uh, well, so my first year at animation school, they didn't let us touch your computers. 
Really? Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. And why was that? What's the premise? Um, to give us a foundation in traditional art, including traditional animation. So we would do hand-drawn animation frame by frame. Once we got into the paint, I really enjoyed it. So then I took some additional painting classes at Seattle Fine Art Academy. And um, I got really into oil painting. That was what I did for a while first. When I moved to Austin about eight and a half years ago, I moved here to uh, really commit to doing fine art. As soon as I moved here, I just immediately started writing my halftone software. So do you experiment with that before you go to canvas or panel or? Sometimes. Or, sometimes, yeah. With something like the faces, no, no. Because I don't have a way to make the faces in the computer. Uh, like this, like the bread, so that's really, technical like i'm not going to be able to change the colors after i have it all blocked in this is the the output from the program okay it took me uh over 10 years to figure out how to do it with color mm. even in the computer that's a big accomplishment then you got more work in the back there i do let's take a look at it tell me what is a mandelbrot mandelbrot set is a geometric shape okay. it's like a circle okay if, if you only run the equation one time you get a circle if you run it again and then it kind of pinches in and then it can go forever and you get a pattern you get this pattern and then you can zoom in on the border of that so the pattern just gets more and more complicated the guy that discovered this benoit mandelbrot he coined the word fractal because uh, it's kind of it's like the same root is fractured mm -hmm. you know it's kind of broken up and he calls fractals the geometry of nature he's got a quote here that um clouds are not spheres mountains are not cones coastlines are not circles bark is not smooth and lightning does not travel in a straight line so he's saying fractals are nature's expression yeah and you can see yeah. that in your work but you're manipulating it to show imagery tell me about these prayer hands because this hits me as just like it has your flavor but it also has that beautiful like religious icon color and feeling the way that it glows and, yeah. and the the richness of the color so it, is this something you've done a lot of, or is this a... It is not. Um, I grew up atheist and uh, just recently became a Christian. When I repented, I was kind of inspired to make this. And it is the same idea, you know, it's just changing the line thickness. And then that's obviously like a really famous image of the praying hands. Um, it's this guy, Gustave Doré, did the drawing like several hundred years ago. As I was reading the Bible and learning about Christianity, it's working all of that imagery into the background pattern. And how has that faith conversion affected your art? I mean, if this piece came from it, yeah. I would say it was a beautiful happening. As far as how I approach it in my studio, it didn't change it too much because I've always just tried to not filter myself and just let my expression come out. Mm -hmm. But the, the things that are coming out are different now. Gotcha. Um, I, I used to get a lot of comments about my art being dark and creepy, mm -hmm. and I don't hear that so much anymore, so. <laughs> I have a Christian faith, and so hearing that story is just super, super inspiring and super cool to hear that, like, it didn't change your technique, but it did change your output to something that the world yeah. sees differently, even. Yeah. That's really cool. When people see your art, what do you hope that they um, think or feel or experience? In general, you know, I just want to make something engaging, like, the viewer basically is completing the image in their mind. Mm -hmm. and I'm just kind of starting it for them, basically. Mm -hmm. So like you spent a big period of time developing this process and just stomping away making your art. Like what kind of encouragement or wise words would you give to someone that's like really still developing their style or finding what, what they want to hone in on? It's all about the next one. Just keep making the next one. Early on, like artists will they'll come up with an idea and they'll be like, oh, I think this is a good idea. And they'll put a lot of time into it. And then that, that piece will be really precious to them. And you gotta just keep moving and just keep making the next one and the next one and the next one. Your style will just kind of come out of that. Well, Bill, it has been awesome to first off meet you, hear your story and see your work. I am just so impressed by all of the like, research you did to discover your style and then all the effort you put in to get there and then the success you're finding it's all just super inspiring so thanks for having me out today yeah thanks for coming by super appreciate it yeah
Well, it was a great day spent with Bill Tavis. It was so cool to see his intensity about the half tones and the fractals and how he gets those into his paintings. And so cool and inspiring to hear about his spiritual change and how that took his paintings from like a darker place to a lighter place. And on that note, I'm leaving here feeling light, feeling joyful, and I will catch y'all in the next one on the quest for zest. Ciao.